not. Yeah. So. Well, anyway, what, what, you, what have you yeah. been up to, Steve? Anything new? Uh, we're actually, yeah, we're actually live streaming on Comedy Club now. Ooh, because uh, cool. comedians can't work for the next couple of months. Do they know um, you put well, your no. name on the wall? Steve, only comedians who yeah. perform in front of large gatherings. I think you're fine. It's uh yeah, I'll be I'll be absolutely <laughs> right. It's uh no no no, it's ten or more. No, don't worry, so, Steve. It's so twelve people is the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two of you have so got to get out of here. <laughs> I had I had Actually, three no, sold out twelve people shows, <laughs> and it was uh it was real rough. Um, no, so we're doing a, uh, we're, we're doing a live stream, uh, comedy club at slash hang, uh, on my YouTube. And, yeah. uh, so three comedians perform on each one. Um, and we have, uh, we have like a webcast audience because a lot of people are live streaming stand up, and it's the saddest fucking thing you'll ever see because they're just doing it to silence. And so what we did yeah. is we're like, okay, we're going to have stream was pretty good. <laughs> <It's> the... <laughs> by the way taylor you have no fucking idea how many people message me from the show and say hey can you convince taylor to do stand-up comedy i'm like that is up to taylor that is absolutely not up to me yeah not like, but just tell him it. tell him he'll be good and i'm like yeah I, I, he knows he's funny um but yeah so we're doing uh we're doing a live stream of it and then we're having uh we're having special guests uh like uh arian foster is doing it with us next week and uh sean oh, nice. doolittle from the nationals is gonna sit on, on one tomorrow uh, so yeah, so sometimes a celebrity guest is a comic and sometimes it's just a, just a fun famous person. So it's, uh, That's awesome, it's man. a way for comedians to still work. Cool. Uh, oh, two things. One, where do they find that? I didn't like, what would be your, Oh, it's a uh, live streamed on my YouTube. So just, uh, YouTube slash YouTube.com slash the Hofstetter, but it's called, uh, the social distancing social club. Gotcha. Nice. And, uh, nice. the other, yeah, cause I, everything has social distancing in the name and we all thought we were really creative and it turns out we're not. <laughs> I uh, I watched John Oliver do his thing, which I don't love, but I usually enjoy. I, I find it to be a little biased, but uh, he did it recently in front of a white screen with no audience yeah. laughing. Oh my gosh. It makes you realize how effective the audience is at persuading you that something's funny. It is. That man needs a laugh track. Yeah. That guy is tremendously unfunny. Tremendous. He's got good writers. They, no, no. He, he has fun. He has fun jokes and fun sight gags. But when it comes down to like, I don't know, his delivery sometimes is poor. And I, I like that he still paused, like, like, like for the laughter. It was <laughs> really almost like, yeah. it was almost like, I'm sure he, he was like, all right, honey, let's watch the show. He plays it. I'm Australian now, by the way. And yeah. <laughs> he plays it, and, <laughs> and he's like, oh shit, where's the laugh track? <laughs> yeah, no, so, you yeah. bubbling fools. I, I think he's pretty <laughs> funny. I think he delivers okay, but I do realize that without the laugh track, it's not the same. You know, he does that gag he's done well, a he's million a times audience. now, where he, you know, he puts up the 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 map up there and he says, "This is Bolivia, a country you know so little about." That's not even Bolivia. This is Bolivia, and then you know, yeah. like he does that, mm -hmm. and it works. And and I laughed at it the first couple of times. Without the audience, it falls flat. Yeah. Well, see yeah, what you just said—that's that, a—that's a pretty funny visual gag, though. I like yeah, that. Like yeah. that—that's a good one. Like, but Bill Hicks, uh, oh. Bill Hicks did a release an album. Well, they released an album after he died, uh, of it called the Flying Saucer Tour, and it was one of the same sets he did on one of his specials. It was like as he was working up the material, but it's eighty percent the same, and he's bombing, and it is fascinating to listen to because it's the same jokes that you know and and kill and you've heard get laughs and it just sounds like they're not good jokes. The, yeah. When, when yeah, a comedian, it's really weird without an audience. When a comedian bombs, did the comedian do something differently that time or sometimes it's just the audience? Uh, w well, I, I feel like you're setting me up for a joke about how I don't know anything. This is bomb, not a setup. I'm asking you I, as a comedic <laughs> expert. That's, that was my, where I was coming from. I appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, I, Sometimes it is sometimes like the comedian is just not connecting, but sometimes it's also you just take one wrong swing up front and then suddenly the audience isn't as interested and mm -hmm. it's quicksand. It's, you know, the more or, or I, I don't know if quicksand is a real thing, but it's it's the movie version of quicksand where you uh, where, you know, you suddenly make like any, you know, any move you make is the wrong move and you struggle <clears> more. And because of that, it gets worse and worse. And, I think it can be a know, thing where like sinking. Like, like I've, I've been to a couple of clubs in Atlanta and if the, if the guy that came, if the guy that preceded you, for example, whoever really yeah. killed and really got us like all fired up and we're already in that like post laugh euphoria, it's almost like post coital euphoria. You're like, oh man, I'm feeling good about everything right now. I, 
and you've had a couple of drinks by this point too, the next guy's going to kill, I feel like. Like if somebody comes up and just absolutely bombs, and we had that, there was a, I don't know what it was. Um, Who is the comedian who has muscular dystrophy or cerebral palsy or something like, like Josh green or something like, I don't Josh know. He, blue. blue. Yeah. It was his night. And it must've been the special Olympics of comedy. Cause they had a little person go up before him and that guy did very poorly. And then seemingly, I don't know if it was a, I don't know if it was a bit or if this actually happened, but somebody just ran up and grabbed the mic when nobody was attending it and started doing like three minutes of comedy and then was hauled away. Why was no one attending it? Like that's was the like a, weirdest. What club exactly? Was this? That that's why I'm like, was that a bit? Was that a comedian yeah. who thought it'd be funny to be like, all right, guys, uh, and and just because the of- yeah, because the rule, the basic rule is like, don't leave the stage empty. Like any professional comedian knows, because like you'll see, yeah, you'll see like a an, handoff. Uh, yeah, you'll see like an early host who sometimes they'll call someone up and they'll start walking off stage, and it's like, no, do not take your your last foot off that stage until someone else is on it leaving the stage empty because it does create like a little bit of weirdness, a little bit of a lag. Mm -hmm. But Kyle, what you were saying, basically there are two problems. Either someone can eat shit beforehand and then it's hard to dig your way out of that. Or someone Mm -hmm. can kill too hard and then it's hard to dig your way out of that. Yeah. Um, And so a good host will kind of reset the table, whether they do a great joke or whether they just talk to the crowd for a second, they have to take the taste of the last comic out of their mouth. I'll say this about that night of comedy. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The host was the funniest guy there. The host was the funniest guy there. Like, like at, yeah. we, we would be like, what's this guy doing? Five minutes? Uh, and you, you get to six minutes, you'd be like, oh, he's doing 10. Shit. The host, we got to wait yeah. five more minutes for the host, boys. Because the host would come out and it was like, I'm sure he's doing the same bit every night. Of course, most comedians are, but I doubt he's trying out new material. And it's just killing. He's just, he's got, if the guy before him bombed, he's just like, whoa, all right then. Uh, that yeah. was, you know, he makes fun of that guy a little bit lightheartedly at least. Uh, and, and, you know, he'll pick at the crowd a little bit, talk about the drink prices or something. I don't know. He was just funny. He was, he was so light with his, the, he, he, he had no fear. You could see that for sure. And, and the, and the States, you could sense oh, that. Sorry. You can sense that if they go up there and they're nervous or they're scared and there's something about us. Yeah. We're predators. We see that and we smell it. We, you can smell that fear just like a dog or whatever. You're just like, oh. I could pick on this guy. He's he's not he's not alphaing his way up there to that microphone. You could you could just tell that like I'm gonna cross my arms and really make it bad for him. <laughs> I, I like that Kyle went to Predator Night at the local comedy club. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Get in for five dollars. Yeah, um, all, all, all felons all night. Yeah. <laughs> no drinks, boys. <laughs> Tested tomorrow. Let's come on. Give it up here. 